I dream a world where man, nor the man will scorn, where love will bless the earth and peace its path adorn. I dream a world where all will know sweet freedom's way, where greed no longer saps the soul, nor every blights our day. A world I dream where black or white, whatever race you be, will share the bounties of the earth and every man is free. Where wretchedness will hang its head and joy like a pearl, attend the needs of all mankind, of such I dream my world. My name is Lacey Woods. Uh, my name is Trey L. Jaquan Godfrey. Siobhan Barnes. My name is Fibin Gabreski. We lived in Burnsville, and the neighbors were just really racist, like calling us names. I would say I, I experienced, started experiencing racism at a very young age. This one girl came up to me and my sister and was calling us out of our names. Mostly by like the media and stuff like that. And then like I didn't really see a lot of black characters on like television shows and stuff like that. And it just felt like even if they weren't saying it like outright, that white was like the better thing to be. It was categorizing me with uh, a whole nother group of people. Like I'm just one of those black people. We went into this restaurant slash bar. I went to, I think it was a McDonald's with my family. We had noticed this white man. He had uh, stared at us. He looked at me and my younger brother. Just people were looking at us, rude, everything. I'm like, is there a problem? And he said, yeah, uh, the problem is y'all. Because they didn't like the interracial couples and the interracial kids. I am Julia Freeman. I work for Voices for Racial Justice. I am the senior organizer for racial justice. So our mission is to advance race, cultural, economic, and social justice through organizing training, creating policy tools, and community organizing and strategic convening. I quit labor organizing, decided I wanted to do community organizing because I really wanted to focus on um, race, cultural, and economic justice. When we actually went into the prison, it was like us along with 40 other organizations that we got to go into the prisons and, and, and hear. We just wanted to hear from the incarcerated. When, when I was leaving, one of the incarcerated uh, leaders said, today I feel like I'm human because I was treated like I was human because they're treated like they're nothing every day. So that just really impacted why I do this work. So we're working with several different groups. On the east side of St. Paul, we have an amazing youth group called IC, um, East Side Equity for Change. Youth have decisions made for them every day, and they're never in the room. And they see stuff every day that we do not see. So they have solutions, you know, and they have powerful voices to talk about that. Working with youth is important because one, they, like I said, they have a lot of ideas beyond what adults can even think about. Sometimes they, they even dream on a different level we can't even comprehend. Also, they're fearless. You know, I see youth as cliff, cliff jumpers, things that adults hesitate with, youth take, you know, a, a jump and a leap for. So I love working with youth. I always tell people, don't sleep on the youth because youth are powerful. My name is Tanisha Abdur Salam, and I am the founder and principal uh, consultant for um, JT Salam and Associates. I really found that it was an important thing for me to speak up when I was seeing things happen within my school building. I think one of the biggest things that um, I believe is important is for us to understand how much impacts or how much race impacts our lives, how much race impacts everything that we do in our society. I went to high school during the time of Rodney King, and so. Um, this, this idea and this space and this understanding of how racism plays out in our, in our society and um, how impactful it is to have cameras and have videotape and have evidence um, was something that really kind of sparked, was sparked during that time when I was in high school. The reality is, is that our children, our young people deserve for us to have real honest conversations around their lived racialized experiences.
My name is Destiny Roberts, and I do all kinds of stuff. Um, I rap, I sing, I make beats. I do filmmaking, photography, et cetera. What I want to change in the community with my music is just a different way of thinking, a different way of moving along. Um, I really try to be positive in my music and talk about things that are important. I just want people to know that there are good things in the world and that there is good music in the world. All off beat, let's get back in rhythm. I need my brothers, we need each other. Coming from your sister, we can do much better. The meaning behind Wake Up um, pretty much is talking about, um, I'm specifically targeting a black men to quote unquote, wake up to see what's going on in the world. I guess it must have been an incident that happened that day that really kind of got me or struck me. I definitely could say that it is a form of activism because I'm kind of being a voice for people who can't necessarily get their voice out there. And so I'm just kind of like a springboard, you know, um, helping out with what's going on in our culture and um, I guess in a way I have a voice and I'm using it for the good. I'm using it to help better our people, to help better our mindsets. I need my brothers, we need each other. Coming from your sister, we can do much better. My name is Elizarin Bosa Meninga Fong and um, I do a lot of arts activism in the community. As the next generation, I'm influenced both by my ancestry and my family and where I come from, as well as my community, my friends, my roommates, people who inspire me to also use skills and talents that all of us have, focus on those and do something that other people can see. A group of artists, all mostly artists of color, came together the day after Philando Castile was killed in Falcon Heights, Minnesota, right outside of St. Paul, and decided that something had to be done as a creative response to not only this one outright murder, but as um, something where people could come together. The, something about murals that I love is so one, the act of creation was really inspiring and also the fact that every time I've come by through here since then, there's somebody taking a picture, there's been a few events happening. It becomes a public space on a really busy street, as you can tell with all the cars driving by, to make a statement. We wanted to kind of have a more hope, hopeful and uplifting message while addressing those realities for younger viewers because it's younger people and younger artists who are going to be leading the world in the next um, generation. Because you are our future and at, at some point, um, you know, I won't be here in this world anymore, in this earth anymore, and I, I believe that it's essential and it's important for me to leave as much as I can with young people so that they can continue to work for the uh, social justice, that they can work for racial justice in our, our country. I know that um, I won't be able to eliminate racism before I die, but I can't not try, and because of that, um, they're dependent upon young people. Youth are powerful. Youth are powerful. Youth are powerful. Youth are powerful. Youth are powerful.